Okay, I have made some really good progress this evening. Um, one thing to note, uh, I have neglected to process the audio with the recording curve, the inverse RIAA curve. So <clears throat> I'm going to be doing that with audio for the future videos, so bear that in mind. Um, otherwise, couple of things I'll point out. First of all, it came to me earlier today how the VMS-80 um, pitch system is actually uh, done. Uh, I was thinking about it in an overly complex fashion and once I was actually putting my mind into the mindset of an engineer at that point in time and the electronics that they had, um, you know, available to them, it became really clear to me how it is that they were um, actually nestling uh, two grooves, not just providing the space for the lateral, which is a combination of lateral plus uh, lateral for vertical, but and, and the minimum land, but also um, being able to push them even further together uh, to, to nestle them together. Uh, and only have the minimum land in between any point that gets really close, right? And so you can kind of see right now, this is what I'm talking about. Um, these two wouldn't have overlapped that much using the VMS 70 style pitch calculation. But like I said earlier today, I was having a smoke and <clears throat> like just a, bolt of lightning it came to me um, and I will let you guys guess at it if you'd like uh, if anybody wants to leave comments on this video and um, tell me what their guess is as to how I did this uh, I will answer but suffice it to say it's incredibly simple once you understand the trick it's actually really incredibly simple uh, and so let me demonstrate that. I've already opened the WAV file. Um, I don't like to do that on camera here because I don't want to expose my file directory structure to you guys. So I'm just going to hit process six and boom. So another thing to note is um, uh, I'm drawing these inverted to how I was before. So in the video yesterday, <coughs> this memory cell would have been flipped vertically. So this stuff would have been starting over here and then it would have been, um, you know, this, this sort of calmer section. So it would have been inverted to what you see here uh, across uh, this axis here. So, or I guess across the vertical axis, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so now it actually, as these are going out, sort of lines up with what the groove would actually look like from left to right. And then as it goes and spirals around, it comes back again. Um, <clears throat> this fifth quarter turn right here is actually displayed sort of, you know, relatively correctly now. Um, so uh, what I mean by that is this is actually how the grooves would be packing on the record. And so the space in between this part and this part is what we're mostly concerned with when we're doing a pitch computer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so just as before, you can see what these two would look like at just base pitch. But honestly, with the VMS-80, there is no um, pitch specification. There's only a land specification. So right now in the 80 style, this pitch designation is being ignored. Um, and only land is uh, you know, being taken into account. So right now I'm gonna, uh, gonna hit forward and backwards. So it just updated this image. <clears throat> what was showing before was a combined corrected image for uh, a prior test. So now you can see what these two look like right here and I'll zoom in in a second, but you can already see that it's stacked them in a way that they're interleaved. This guy's peaks are clearly higher than these peaks, but 
as you'll see in a second, there's no point at which there's actually an overlap. They get really close, but the minimum land specification is always being respected. And it packs them together as tightly as it can with only the minimum land in between. So let's zoom out. And let's go forward a quarter turn. Hmm, that one's kind of boring. That's probably more interesting. So, you know, this would have been a much lower LPI for um, the VMS 70 style. There would have been a lot more wasted space. Uh, and so this is doing the same thing as the 80s or as Flo's pitch computer. So again, let me go forward and then backwards. And now this is updated and we'll zoom in. And you can see <clears throat> even right there, it looks like it's really close, but in between those two points, it's at least a half mil for all of these points separation. So again, how this is done, it seemed to me like it was going to take a lot of math and a lot of iterative processing. Nope. No, once you actually understand the trick to it, it is, it's very much like a magician's trick. Um, that one's sort of interesting, but let's keep going for a minute. So, I mean, as you keep seeing in this one, we've got interleaving and we've got a respecting of the minimum land at every single point. Yeah, that one looks cool because the peaks of this one are dipping into some valleys there. So let's update this guy. And let's zoom in. All right. Cool. Very cool. Let's do a couple more. Yeah, another one. Wow, look at that nestling. Okay, so <clears throat> the next things I'm going to implement are the RIAA processing and um, uh, depth control. And then, uh, I mean, after that, I, I really, I just start porting this into the VM, uh, excuse me, into the, um, uh, into the VST. Uh, and then actually output PWM and then take it from there, you know, actually start to um, uh, vary the speed of the pitch motor on uh, my own personal lathe and yeah, again, we'll film some new footage once I've got some of that worked out. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, this is freaking great. I really didn't think I was going to figure this out so quick. Very cool. All right, stay tuned.